Okay, folks, so we're going to pick up where we left off yesterday on April 29th. Um, this is just a friendly reminder, but we were looking at individual Lewis dot structures. The main thing was that the group number equals your number of valence electrons. Okay? So, for example, if I'm looking at um, selenium here, SE, that's in group number six, it's right below carbon and sulfur, I'm sorry, oxygen and sulfur. So it's going to have six valence electrons. So we're going to put one on each side, one, two, three, four, and then we'll double up when we run out of sides, five and six. Now, one thing I want to point out is that there are a lot of ways to correctly draw this. So notice how we have our two bonding sites. Here and here are the single electrons. Okay, and those are for bonds, those are bonding sites. Now they're on the left and the bottom right now. But we could have drawn this a different way if we wanted to. We could have drawn it like this, where we have the bonding sites on the left and the right. We could have even drawn it like this, where we have bonding sites on the top and the bottom. Um, as long as selenium has six total valence electrons around it, and we didn't unnecessarily double up. So for example, unnecessarily doubling up would look something like this where you have two on a side, but you have an empty side right here. That would not be correct. So as long as you have six valence electrons total, and you did not unnecessarily double up, that's a correct drawing of selenium. So that is what you can do for selenium. And the reason why I'm pointing this out is because you're going to want to be able to move your bonding sites. So again, those are the single electrons right here. You're going to want to be able to move those freely when we're working with compounds which is what we're going to start on this next page. Okay, Lewis structures can also show the bonds. Lewis structures can also show the bonds. Yes, sir? How do we know if it's uh, in six valence electrons? Um, so selenium is in group six, so that means it has six valence electrons. That's how you know. It's based on where it is in the periodic table. Yep, good question, good clarification. Okay, so here are the rules for making bonds. It's going to require a lot of drawing. And this is the day where you definitely want to have a pencil and not a pen if you can help it. Uh, not because you'll make mistakes, but simply because there's a lot of erasing because you have to move electrons. You have to move them. And so you want to be able to erase, otherwise things get a little messy on your paper. Why don't we get to erase the Okay, so first rule. Start with the element that wants the most valence electrons. Start with the element that wants the most valence electrons. What do, you be, what do you mean by that, Mr. Pilcher? Well, think of it this way. If I think of a fluorine, for example, you don't have to draw this. So fluorine, it's got seven valence electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. How many more does fluorine need? One. It just needs one. So fluorine can only make one bond. It's going to end up being right here. That one electron can make a bond, but that's it. Whereas somebody like carbon, one, two, three, four, how many more does carbon want? Four. It wants four more, okay? Each one of these bonding sites has to be used for carbon to be happy. So the idea that we kind of come up with, or we came up with, is that you always want to go for um, the closest to carbon. So you'll start with the element that's closest to carbon. Often you'll have a carbon in the problem, and so you'll know to just start with that. But whatever element wants the most electrons, wants the most bonds, that's what you should start with in these problems. Yep? So what about the ones that only have like three valence uh, They don't really participate in covalent bonding because they don't really want to share. They just want to get rid of them. Okay. Good question. Yep? No, because it's so small, it just wants to. Yep, I actually am about to mention that. What's that? Yeah, so they might. We'll actually do a practice one just like that. So hold that thought for a moment. Yeah? Okay, so next one. Elements like to be symmetrical with the same number of elements on each side. So they like to be symmetrical with the same number of elements on each side. Be prepared to erase electrons to line up and move to get eight. Okay? So you need to be, pre be prepared. You're going to have to erase electrons at times and move them. And it's all about getting eight valence electrons. Okay? It's all about getting those eight valence electrons. 
And we'll see several examples of that. I'm going to do like five examples on the board probably. Lots of practice. Towards the end, you need to circle the electrons that the element has and or is sharing. Okay? So you need to put a circle around all the electrons that we're talking about that a particular element has or is sharing. So we're going to have a lot of circles on our pages here. You'll notice my answer keys are covered in circles. Um, John from fourth period called the problems very Venn diagram E. It's a new adjective, I guess. Venn diagram E. So, well, you'll see what we mean here shortly. Can we say you're very over yourself? Yeah. Sure. We'll go for it. Okay. Uh, now, they should have eight and line up. So, these circles, they should always have eight inside of them. And they should line up. Okay? You shouldn't have any crazy circles. So, when you guys are doing problems later, you should not have circles that kind of look like this. Okay? They should look like, you know, like a circle. They should look like that. Okay? Nothing too crazy. Nothing too crazy. Okay. And lastly, this one isn't on your notes, but I just want to remind you guys. Hydrogen, the hipster element, is kind of an exception. It only has a... Oops. It only uh, wants two valence electrons. So hydrogen only has one to begin with, but only wants one more because it's so small. It's full outer shell, only requires two because it's that first shell. All right. So, we got a lot of example problems to do because there's a lot of rules. So we got to see what I mean. Let's talk about Cl2, chlorine. Okay, so if I draw, I'm going to draw my chlorines with two different colors so you can see where the electrons originally were. So I'll draw one chlorine here. I'm going to draw my next chlorine to the right of it. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to have my bonding site pointing to the right. So I'll go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. And notice how my bonding site, that would be this loner electron right there. I'm going to have that on the right hand side. Now my next chlorine, which I'll do in blue I guess, I want to have its bonding site kind of pointing to the left. I want to line those bonding sites up. Make my life easier. Okay, so I got one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So they both have to start with seven. And when you have bonding side, sites line up, they'll form a bond. So here's how I show this. I have to circle their full octets. So this chlorine on the right in blue has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and now eight electrons around it. So it has that one uh, red electron from the left. And this chlorine on the left now has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons around it as well. And this area of overlap that makes this Venn diagram-y, that is a bond. So whenever you have overlap, that is what the bond is. That's where it is. Now do you guys see how we have a single electron being shared from each chlorine? So that's why this is specifically called a single bond. And you don't have to draw this last part, but some people will even just draw a line here connecting these guys to show, hey, that's a bond. So they'll connect those two electrons to show that's a bond. Uh, you don't have to. You'll do that for different problems down the road. Um, so some people like to just do it right from the beginning. But Okay. Let's try one that's a little more complex. We got CH4. So which element should we start with? Definitely C, because it wants the most bonds. So I'm going to go ahead and plot that in the middle here. So i got to see one, two, three, four valence electrons. This is in group four. So it has four bonding sites. All of those bonding sites have to form a bond before carbon is happy. They all have to form a bond. So it's going to have four bonds. Okay. Now I'm going to draw this up here. You don't have to worry about this for a second. But a hydrogen only has one valence electron. So you can put that one on... Any side of hydrogen, north, east, south, west, it doesn't matter. Okay, whatever is convenient. So you can put here, here, there, there, whatever. As long as there's only one total. So here's what I'm going to do. The hydrogen I draw above, I'm going to have its bonding site right there. Okay? And this hydrogen is now happy. Remember, hydrogen's that exception to the rule. It only wants two valence electrons. And so, boom. There's a happy hydrogen right there. 
Carbon has, if you were to circle carbon right now, so don't circle it, but if you were, you'd be like, one, two, three, four, five, five. Okay, yeah, carbon's not happy yet. It only has five. So we can't circle it yet. The next carbon I'll put right here. I got four to work with. So now this guy's happy. Now I got another hydrogen here. That guy's happy. And I got one last hydrogen right there. He's also happy. And now what happens is carbon at this point has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight valence electrons around it. And we have four places of overlap. Do you guys see that? So that means there are four bonds in this problem. And each one of these happens to be a single bond because there's just a single element being shared by each atom. Uh huh. What's up? So is there ever going to be a bond that's made where it equals more than eight? Uh, no. So an atom will only want eight total around it. Yep. Yeah. Except for hydrogens that want just the two. Yeah. Good question. All right. Now they do get more complex. What about O2? What about O2? So I'll draw an O here. I'll make sure bonding site's on the right of it. All right, so I got one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, it only has six valence electrons, so that's good there. I'll draw another one in blue. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so I lined up that bonding site. But here's the problem. If I were to go ahead and circle this now, I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven. Oh, that, that doesn't cut it, okay? So that doesn't cut it, not to, because it only has seven, not eight. Not to mention, you have a bonding site right here. You can't have a bonding site unbonded in your final problem, okay? So there's two problems with that. Oh, oh goodness, what happened? Where are we going? I just want to hit back. Let's see here. There we go. Okay. So here's what you have to do. Here's why you want to use a pencil for these problems. You can, bonding sites can move to form a bond. You can't move them when you have a single atom, but you can move them to form a bond. So we're going to take this blue electron here. We're going to move it up. We're going to take this red electron here. We're going to move it up. But I thought they weren't supposed to double up. They can once you're bonding. So the end of notes yesterday, we said don't double them up except during bonding. So now this guy's happy. It's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This guy's happy because it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we have a bond here during the, where the overlap takes place. So that's a bond. And what do you guys think we call that bond? Double bond. A double bond because each atom is sharing two electrons. We got a double bond there. And again, you'll see people kind of connect these so they're like one bond, two bonds. To kind of connect those electrons right there. So you got a double bond. Why don't you guys take a quick minute, try N2 on your notes. So that's kind of towards the middle, maybe. I can't remember. But try N2 on your own, see what you can come up with. This makes a lot more sense though. Yeah, starting to click. That's good. So I'll give you guys, though, maybe about 90 seconds for N2. So I'm going to pause my recording for a moment. So let's take a look at how to do nitrogen. I'll draw them in two colors again, like I have been. So I got a nitrogen here, okay? One, two, three, four. And I'll put my double up uh, maybe on the outskirts. I like to kind of put it on the outside. But I have my second one here. So I got one, two, three, four, five. Okay. So I can form a single bond right here in the middle with these two guys. But if I were to do that, if I start circling them up, this nitrogen only has six electrons around it, so that doesn't really do any good. Not to mention it has a bonding site here that's open and a bonding site here that's open. Both are deal breakers. So, okay. So I gotta start moving electrons. So I'm gonna move this guy up and this guy up. So now I got another bond that I can form here and here. So now we're at seven a pop, which is better, but still not good enough. So I'm going to move these two down. You can move bonding sites to form a bond. You can't move them for any other reason. But So now this nitrogen has eight around it. This nitrogen has 
tape around it. And what do you guys suppose we call that overlap? Yep, yeah, triple bond. Can you do like that? Yeah, I can do one more here. Okay, this next one we're going to do, which is a little bit more unique. P2H2. I'm going to try some P2H2. So this one we have more than two atoms in play. All right. So which one do we want to start with in the middle? Phosphorus, right? Because it wants more electrons than a hydrogen. If you think about it, hydrogen always just wants one more. Hydrogen's never going to be in the middle. It's always going to be on the edges. Okay. Similar with any halogen, like the ones that have seven already, fluorines, chlorines, that kind of thing. Yeah? So are we going to put the two piece down there? Yeah, let's go ahead and give that a shot and see if we can make it work. Okay, so I'll have a phosphorus here. So I got, um, let's see, we'll go one, two, three, four, five. Got another phosphorus here. We'll go one, two, three, four, five. So notice how I'm lining up my bonding sites. You'll just kind of naturally start to do that without having to think about it too much. Similar, but I have some H's in play now. I have a couple of H's I need to take care of. So those will go on the outside somewhere. And again, symmetry is your friend, so always make it symmetrical when you can. So um, if I'm going to put an H up here on the P on the right, I should do the same thing right here. I should put it on top over here. So those guys are happy. We're out of H's though, and there's still open bonding sites on the bottom of both of these phosphorus. So we need to go ahead and move those. So we're going to move this red one up here. We're going to move this blue one up here. And now this phosphorus is happy. It has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons around it. And yeah? Mine doesn't look like that. It doesn't necessarily have to look exactly like this. Can you come check mine when you're done? Yes, I will. It does not look like that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And in the middle, we have a double bond. But on top, we have a couple of single bonds. Yeah, you could have put your H's on the left and the right, and that would have been okay. You could have put them on, both on the bottom, and that would have been okay as well. Could you put one on the bottom and one on the top? You can. But um, we'll, we'll, you'll have plenty of time to practice. But uh, I really suggest that you make it symmetrical, like this. So it's, it's a mirror image on the other side. Yeah, I can do one more as a class. Let's see here. Which one do I want to pick? N2H. Or C2H. Let's see here. I'm going to go with SiO2. I'm going to go with SiO2, that one in the middle. Let's try that one. So we'll do one more here. So again, we're trying SiO2. So who wants the most bonds? SI. So I'm going to start with that one. So I'll put that in the middle here. SI. It's got one, two, three, and four. And then I've got a couple of O's. I'm going to put the O's on either side of it. Again, I want to play by symmetry. That's the best way to do it. So I'll put an O on the left, and it's got six valence electrons. I'm going to make sure my one of my bonding sites lines up. So I'll go like this: one, two, three, four, five, six. And I'll put another oxygen over here. So now I got one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, so nobody's happy currently. Nobody's happy currently um, because. This guy, if you circle the O right now, it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven electrons, but that's not quite enough. We need eight, right? Not to mention it has an open bonding site, which is a no-no. So to make this O on the right happy, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to move this red electron. I'm going to move it right here. And gonna, silicon's going to also throw one in the pot. And it's going to go right here. Okay. So now this oxygen's happy because it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons around it. Silicon isn't quite there. It's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's better, but not quite there. 
So the silicon and the oxygen on the left are going to cut a similar deal. So this black electron is going to move down here. And this red electron on oxygen is going to move up here. So now this oxygen is happy. And now silicon is also happy. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we have two areas of overlap. So there's a bond there and a bond there. And each bond, since it has two electrons being shared a piece, those are both double bonds. And you can't quite remember, wait, how many bonds is it? You can just connect them and be like, all right, one, okay, that must be a double bond. And one, two, that must be a double bond. Okay. So. Uh, in the middle, or so in the middle, you have a double bond. Oh, they're all different. This is a double bond. You have to look at each one individually. That was a double bond, but this is a single, and that's a single right there. Does that kind of make sense? You have, you have to look at them case by case basis where you have overlap. Okay, so here's the deal. We're now on to this worksheet right here. Okay, you will have a quiz over this on Tuesday. That will include what we learned today. And some of the, we're going to build with model kits, the same uh, compounds, we're just going to build it with model kits on Monday. And that's what your quiz is going to cover on Tuesday, okay? This stuff is kind of confusing, so I've given you a bunch of practice. We have 17 minutes left in class. I want you to use them all to do this worksheet right here. That's page number three of your packet, okay? So get them cooking. There's a lot of people really struggle with this at first, but then they really get into a groove, okay? So... Let's go ahead. Let's finish off this week well. I'm going to come around and check in with everyone and anyone who has questions. I'll come see you here shortly. Okay? All right. Let's get to it. Let's do it.